Watching over. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. I desire the saints to keep my name before the Lord. Continue to pray for me, spirit, soul, and body. Pray that the Lord will help me to come up a little higher. Yeah. Amen. That uh, my praise and worship will be acceptable unto him. Yeah. And, uh, pray for the dying world, as my wife said. Pray for our children. Uh, there's a couple of, well, we've got a couple of children that kick against the pricks. Right. I right. <laughs> uh, pray that God will uh, uh, change their hearts. Yeah. Change their hearts and, and not only that, give them a mind to be saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's everlasting too late. Calls one to start the process. Yeah. And the others may fall. Uh, remember the sick among us, those lying on the bed of affliction. Remember the bereaved family, Sister Carmen. be none of the prayer requests like the church to stand. And let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We say thank you and praise you for your grace, for your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you. Remember, Lord, that we need your help. We need your strength. We need your grace. Lord Jesus, make intercession for us according to your will, according to your riches and glory. We pray, Lord, that you would bless each and every soul here on today. Bless us even on our desires of children. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Remember they are your inheritance in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, those that are traveling over the highways and the byways. And remember Christian ministries in a special way. And Lord, we ask you to destroy every yoke, break down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Bless the Bible study on tonight. 
Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And keep us in the center of your will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As uh, Elder Monty was talking about uh, being thankful. Amen. There's, there's times where we just uh, really just need to come before the Lord and not really ask for anything, but just giving thanks. Amen. Let the Lord know that we're thankful for Him yes. you know, and what He has done. Thank you, Lord, because He appreciates that. That's how you draw closer yes. to Him. Yes. Amen. So I want to go over to the book of Ephesians. I'm trying to get through this book. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 1. And um, I want to talk about tonight uh, God's eternal plan. His eternal plan for all believers. And God has a plan for us. And, 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 and he's working according to that plan. You know, because he that's what he's predestinated. That's what he has has set in motion. Uh, if we think of the word chronos, you know, that's the chronological time that we operate in. God operates at Kairos, and that's his time. That's God's time. You know, so everything is moving by his time. Amen? Everything. Even to the, to the sense of the time where we are born, and even being here in Erie, being here in this Bible study, yes. is all according to God's plan. Mm -hmm. Amen? If he has the very hairs of your head numbered, Surely he has the outlier of your whole life. <laughs> Amen. No. Amen. It's appointed unto man once to die. God even knows that appointment when that's going to happen. So, and things that happen to us don't happen by chance. It has to go through the filter of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And 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 what I like about uh, the book of Ephesians. Uh, as soon as we get into it, it, it gives you the, 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 the theological doctrine of the church. Amen. And that's what uh, a lot of Christians miss out on. If you don't know the theological doctrine of the church or of Christ or being saved, then you lack power. You lack, you lack, you lack the strength and the ability because you don't know your rights. You don't know what God has done. In other words, the enemy can say anything to you, and you'll believe it, because he's convincing. <laughs> he's a liar. Liars are convincing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, but you got to know what God has done. Amen. And then when he presents you falsehoods, you're able to stand against it. Amen. And then it also helps us. It also helps us when we get into these scriptures. It also helps us to make our decisions uh, based on God's righteousness, based on what God has established for us. We don't have to be confused whether to go left or right uh, because we know God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. There are certain things people can tell me about God, and, and I know whether it's true or not. Amen? Because uh, uh, there was... Uh, dealing with uh, an individual and the individual is telling me that uh, being in uh, it's a counseling session, being in uh, 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 a relationship uh, and, and having a child uh, not being married was the will of God. I said, well, no, that's not God's will. Amen. That's not that's God. God doesn't want you to go out there fornicating. Amen. God wants you to get married. Amen. Didn't have children. You follow? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. So, so when people bring you information like that, uh, you're able to understand what God's will is. Amen. And, and say, uh, make a judgment based on the truth that is contained in the scriptures. Not, not based on one's own thoughts, ideas, or opinions. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. 
so we look here then. Uh, I want to uh, drop down to uh, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Uh, oh, verse 16, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. All right, read. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. <laughs> Amen. So, so Paul, uh, we're talking about God's eternal plan for us. Amen? And Paul had, had outlined uh, from verses 3 to verses 14 God's eternal plan for us. Amen? His eternal plan for us. Not, not for you as an individual, but for us as a body in Christ. Amen. These, this, is, this is the general plan that God has for the body of Christ. Amen. So Paul outlined that. And just so we can expedite time, uh, the, the, the first thing that, he, that God said that he wants for us, he wants for us, he wants us that we should be holy. Amen. Without blame before him in the Forever. Amen. Forever. Not just to get saved and backslide and never, never, never remain saved. But God, God wants this for us throughout eternity. This is his plan. This is why Jesus came and died on the cross. Amen. And manifested it. And, and he sent us the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is why we are in Christ. Amen. Uh, so, so knowing this is, is key to salvation and deliverance. Amen? Knowing that God wants you to be holy without blame before him in love. The second thing that God wrote in, in these scriptures here, uh, that we should experience the adoption as children. Amen? That we should know that we've been adopted by God, and that we are his child, that we belong to a family. Amen? God wants us to, that's a part of his will and his desire. And the key part of that is, is that not only being adopted into the family of God, uh, when a child is adopted into a family, they get all the rights and the benefits of, of what that family has to offer. And we being adopted into the family of God. Y'all remember he told Abraham that, um, uh, that from your seed, Abraham, I'm going to bless all the nations. Y'all remember that? Thank you, Lord. And that seed being as one, not seeds of many. So that makes us, when we believe on Christ, we are part of that family. Amen? Uh, but now, and we are part of the benefits, the blessings that go along with that family. But the key thing or the key difference with God is that the, uh, if, if, you, if, 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 if Monty were to adopt me into his family, I wouldn't necessarily be a blood relative. Amen? But when you're adopted into God's family, you are a blood relative. Amen? And wherein God shares with you his nature. Amen? I, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. You, you, you're a part of the nature of God. Amen? Uh, whenever he said, uh, uh, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Amen? You become bone. If you allow me to say it this way, Jesus said, you're bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You become part of the, you have the nature of God in you. Amen? Uh, so you can be like God. Amen. That's why it gives you the Holy Ghost 
and the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? So that you can have His nature. Yeah. Uh, and, and a regular adoption, that doesn't occur. Yeah. Uh, but with the spiritual adoption, which God has for you, yeah. you, you have the nature of God dwelling in you. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Amen? That's important. That's why He can say, be holy for I am holy. Because you got his nature. Yeah. Amen. That's why he can, because you got the nature of God in you uh, through Christ. That's why when 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 uh, when you get saved, God no longer looks at you as 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 an individual on the outside, but sees you through the eyes of Christ. He sees Christ in you. Uh, that's why he can abound towards you. That's why he can bless you. Yeah. Amen. That's how he can forgive you because he no longer sees you, but he sees your life hid in Christ. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Amen. That's huge. Uh, you're no longer a foreigner or a stranger, uh, but you are a co-heir, a joint heir uh, with Christ. Yeah. Having the nature of God within you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, let me, that's huge. So that's God's plan. Amen? That's his plan. All right? And then, then the, the third aspect of it is, is that is God's plan for us is that we should experience eternal redemption and forgiveness of sins. Amen? Eternal redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Now, what, what does the word redemption mean? What does it mean to be redeemed? Bought back. Bought back. Purchased back. Amen? And and uh, through the blood of Jesus. And then set free. Right. Amen? Set free. Not to serve yourselves, but to serve God. Yeah. Amen? So, so, so uh, God's eternal plan, His eternal plan, amen, is for us to be redeemed. Amen? And then... His eternal plan for us is to have eternal forgiveness. Amen. To be set free. To be released from the death forever. Amen. That's why God doesn't hold anything against you. Amen. I know whatsoever a man saw it, uh, that shall he also reap. But that's not God holding anything against you. It's a part of his process uh, so they can yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness in your life. Amen. Man, I'm teaching him tonight. Uh, I mean, that's why. That's why you reap what you sow. Amen. Not because God is against you. It's because God is using that process uh, to, so that so that so that He can reap something out of your life. Amen. Uh, so that you can uh, uh, yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. So so the other thing that God wants us to get out of uh, his plan for us is, is that uh, he wants us to come to the knowledge or go through a process of wisdom and understanding. Amen? God wants us to literally digest this word. Amen? To understand it. To digest it. To put it in our hearts and our spirit. Amen? Then he wants us to live uh, according to his wisdom. Amen? According to the wisdom of God. That's his plan. That's why he makes his wisdom accessible to us. Amen? And he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God uh, that he give it to all of us liberally. Uh, and he doesn't get upset with you when you ask him. Amen? So, so we've got to understand that 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 when we are in the body of Christ, we have this access, amen, to the wisdom of God, and we have access to understanding God, yeah. amen, and, and in that, he wants us to digest it, amen, hallelujah, let it go through your system, amen, and when you digest something, you reap the minerals and the vitamins and the, and the nutrients from it. Amen? And it causes you to grow. Uh, a child that doesn't eat won't grow. Amen? And if you don't eat the word of God, you won't grow. 
Amen. So he wants you to digest it. Not just know it. Uh, not just understand it. But he wants you to digest it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> My brother. I think not only to digest it, but to become it. Absolutely. Absolutely. He wants you to become it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that and that and, and that and that's the process that he takes us through. Amen. And that's notice, that's a part of his plan. So I ain't gotta ask God, do you want me to know? Huh? Because he wants you to know. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, someone asked me, uh, 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 is it God's will for me to get baptized? Uh, and he said, I'm going to pray about it. I said, you ain't got to pray about that. Uh, it is God's will. It is God's design. Amen? That uh, certain things that God makes known unto us, we don't have to pray about them. Amen? It's the will of God. It's the desire of God. We, we should be praying, Lord, how can I attain it? Uh, Lord, Lord, fix me so I can receive it. Uh, those are the things we ought to be praying about. Amen? But God wants you to digest this word. Uh, to literally, I like what he said, to become the word. Amen? To live this word. But when I'm using the word digest, I'm using the, 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 the aspect of it of you gaining the benefit from it. Amen? You gaining the power that's related in it. Amen? Uh, and those things are accessible to you. Amen? Uh, that's a part of God's plan. That's his will. That's his desire. If you weak, you weak because you're not doing what God has required you to do. Amen? Uh, you follow me? If you're strong, you're strong because you're doing the things that God has required you to do. You're experiencing the knowledge and the understanding of Him. Amen? Now, here's a caveat. Here's a caveat. The enemy, the devil, wants you to forget about God uh, and does everything he can to disturb your memory uh, about what God has done and what he's doing for you. Amen. He don't, he don't, you get into trouble, thank you. He don't want you to remember the scriptures. He don't want you to remember the word. Amen. Uh, because if you remember the word, you remember the scriptures, then you're able to resist the enemy. Uh, step back, and then he has to flee. Amen. You can get him behind you. Amen. So the, 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 the enemy is, a, he attacks our memory. Amen. So that we don't remember God. Uh, remember what he told the children of Israel when you come out of Egypt uh, and, and I put you in places uh, where you didn't build and give you food that you didn't grow. Uh, he said what? Don't forget about me. Amen. When God starts blessing us, uh, uh, we start, God starts moving on our behalf. Uh, uh, and if we're not careful, we will forget yeah. uh, the God that brought us out. Yeah. We will forget the God of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> the God that, that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask for things. Yeah. Amen. This is what I feel like when we start off our prayers. Uh -huh. It should start off thanking God. Absolutely. For everything that he has done. Everything. You know, everything we can remember. Yes. Thank him for Yes. 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 That's huge. Yes. Amen. Remember your God. Wow. Amen. Don't forget your God. Amen. Don't leave home without <laughs> Amen. Uh, remember him. Amen. And, and, and the other thing, uh, it's God's plan that, that, that we live in eternally in heaven and eternally on this earth. Amen. That's the plan of God. That's the will of God. Amen. That we live eternally in heaven because he's going to create a new heaven. Right? And a new earth. And who's going to inhabit that new heaven and new earth? We are. Amen. 
Uh, and that's God's plan. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and what we have to realize, I'm saying this, because all of this is, is contained in Ephesians chapter, ver, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Amen. And the reason why I'm saying it's the eternal God's plan is because some of these things that are uh, the true manifestation of, of, of his plan won't happen until after the rapture. Amen. Uh, when when, uh, when, when he, uh, declares time will be no more. When we enter into eternity. Amen. Y'all with me? But, but uh, we have to realize that, that though the, the, the ultimate manifestation of the plan is not until that time, what God has done for us right now is sure. Yeah. Amen. Uh, he looks at it as it's already done. Amen. Amen. Uh, God, God, can I, can I teach you for a minute? Yeah. God, God wants us to be perfect. Amen. But we won't truly be perfect until that time. Amen. But, 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 but even as we pass through here now, He's going to have to impute righteousness unto us. Uh, until we get there, uh, wherever there there is. <laughs> uh, over there. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but, but, it's just as real. Uh, it's just as abiding uh, as if you already have it. Y'all want to get it back? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. And I'm asking if it makes sense. I'm only asking it like that to, to see if you ask a question. Because <laughs> I know it makes sense. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all let me? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God has called us to, to stand up, you know, before him in righteousness through Jesus Christ. Amen. God looks at us through the eyes of Jesus when you're saved. He looks at you through the eyes. This is Christian doctrine, what I'm giving you tonight. Uh, he looks at you through the eyes of Jesus as you are saved, you are perfected, that you're already dwelling in heavenly places, that you're far above principalities and powers, that you have all power and anointing and authority. That's how God looks at you. Yeah. Amen. That's how we got to look at ourselves. And then, you know, when you're going into a fight, you got to have some confidence. Yes, sir. Uh, if you're a football player, basketball player, if you're on the team, you got to have some confidence. Yes, and then if you get ready to take a test, you got to have some confidence. Yes, sir. Uh, and God gives us some confidence, amen, through Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and the, 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 the uh, how can I say it? The, he's given us uh, an assurance when he gave us the Holy Ghost. When he gave us the Holy Ghost, he sealed us uh, uh, unto the day of redemption. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it's a seal. Yeah. Amen. It's a promissory note. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an assurance. Yeah. Amen. That, that what, what is written in this Bible belongs to you. Yeah. Amen. What's written in the scriptures, it shall come to pass in your life if you hold on.
Yeah. Uh, it belongs to you. Yeah. All right, we've got to know that. Amen. We got to know that. Uh, and not allow the enemy our own thoughts to deter us from that. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Bumble to Christ. Child of God. Uh, a child of God with power. Uh, with the anointing. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't allow your own thoughts and feelings to deter you from what God has done for you when you proclaim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Amen. Does it matter how I feel? I get up in the morning and I say, man, I don't feel worthy. But is that is that true with God? No. Uh, no. Amen. Uh, the enemy tell me, queer you, I'm gonna kill you. You ain't worthy. Uh, and, and is that true with God? No. Uh, the only thing that matters is what God said. The uh, only thing that matters is what this word says. Yeah. And what's gonna help me to fight against what the enemy says if I digest this word. Uh, if I hide this word in my heart, if I stand in the scripture, if I know our rights. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the problem, the problem with most Christians, why they don't why they live defeated lives, is because they don't know. Amen. They're not living uh, 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 um, uh, foundational doctrine. Uh, they're not living doctrine. Amen. They're not living according to the word. Amen. Now, I can't just rely on the Bible study. You got to get it for yourself. Amen. 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 You can't rely on YouTube. Huh? You got to get it for yourself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Uh, I can't stand on my father's God. Huh? Uh, my mother's God. Uh, I pray in the name of my mother's God. Uh, I pray in the name of my father's God. Uh, I got to know him for myself. You got to know him for yourself. Amen. And, 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 and what we don't realize, that's a privilege and an honor. That's a privilege uh, and an honor that God opens himself. He hobbles himself uh, to behold us, to deal with us. That's an honor. That's a privilege. Amen. Uh, but 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 our minds and our minds our minds have have, have not seen it like that uh, because our minds have been not renewed like that. Amen. Amen? Uh, but we gotta see it like that. Amen. We gotta understand it like that. Amen. When 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 the scripture says entering his gates with thanksgiving, Amen. He truly means that. When you come through those doors, you should come with thanksgiving. Uh, then when he says, enter in his courts with praise, amen, this is a representation of the courtroom of God. And you should have praise. Uh, praise in your heart. Praise in your mind and your spirit. Amen. And then when he shows up, uh, you should have honor and respect uh, for the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. And that did make your petition, Lord. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But you know, we come in uh, carrying around our issues right. and our problems. Uh, you know, God, 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 can I talk? Amen. God knows about your issues. He knows about your problems. And he has the answers to your issues. He has the answers to your problems. But he want to see if you're going to come in and reverence him. Yes. I give him glory. Give him honor. Yes. Give him praise. Yes, Lord. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Forget about yourself. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother. Yeah, we have to be like the lady with the issue of love. You know, we, we, we have to reach for God. Yes. Even in our situation. Yes. That's true. Yeah. It's a difference from having a visitation from God and then Him dwelling yes, and abiding. Yeah. Amen. Uh, when, when people 
come visit. Amen. You may fix up something and get something put stuff in the closet, you know, because they're only going to be a short time. Amen. But when somebody's abiding, God ain't living with you. Uh, <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? That's a whole other scenario. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what God wants to do. He don't just want to visit Christian ministries. He don't want to just visit you. He wants to abide, habitate with you, live with you. Amen. Talk with you. Walk with you. Amen. He wants to be in you. Amen. That's a difference. Some people just want them to visit. No, I just want you to visit. I want you to stay with me. Stay with me, Lord. You may see something you don't like. <laughs> hey! My brother. And that's a classic example of him sending his spirit. Yes. When he sends his spirit, he wants to abide in you. Yes. Uh, he, wants to, he wants to make residence yes. in you. Yes. To help you yes. overcome your issues. Yes. To overcome your, your trials and tribulations. Yes. He's there to help. Yes. By God. And to fulfill that plan yes. that I just said. And we can stand on the scriptures. The scripture says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are we the temple of the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. Amen. That we were created to be in his likeness. Yes. It is in him. Amen. Amen. That's part of that adoption. Being like him. Huh? He's, we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. And God dwelleth in you. Amen. He abided in you. He habitates in you. Amen. He didn't just visit you. Uh, he's with you. Always. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we say abide by in me. If you abide in me, you can ask what you feel. Ask what you feel, and it shall be. Amen. Notice what he said. If my words abide in you, yeah. uh, and I abide, and, and I abide in you. Ask what you feel, and it shall be. With that word abide. To dwell, to live in you. Amen. Uh, let me stop saying the word abide. Uh, sin. Sin. Amen. All sin stops him from abiding. He doesn't. That's, that's why Christ died. Sin separates us from God. Amen. Sin. Whatever, whatever the transgression is, it stops him from abiding. Uh, but then what's the remedy for sin? Repentance. Repentance. To turning away from it. Amen. Calling on the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus washes you, cleanses you from all the night. Amen. Thank you. My God. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Now, we're we doing good. All right. We're verse reading. 18. All right. Now, I just want to say this. Uh, currently, all believers are righteous in God. Amen. And have access to everything that God has. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to hold, hold that, hold that, uh, that where you are, because I want to show you uh, in the scriptures that, that, what I said about what is God's plan. Uh, what, what did I say God's plan was for your life? What did I say? Be holy. Be holy for, for he said, be holy for I am holy. Be uh, holy without sin, blameless before him in love. What else? Be All right, let me go through it again. Thank you, Lord. Because this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is important because this is God's plan. Amen. This is what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, and he's not trying to accomplish anything outside of this. Amen. This is what he's trying to accomplish in your life. This is why you have tests and trials. 
This is why he gave you the Holy Ghost. This is why Jesus died on the cross. This is why he's making a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. So ought not we take the time to put it in our hearts? Amen. So as his children. Yep, and in the end, he wants us to be perfect. Amen. He wants us to receive and know that we've been adopted into the holy family. Amen. Because that's his plan. Uh, and that adoption means that not only do you have all the rights of, a, of an adopted child, but you also have the nature of God dwelling in you. Amen? So that you can be like him. Amen? Uh, he also has redeemed you, forgiven you. Amen? Of, 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 of all sin. Amen? Purchased you back uh, and forgiven you, released you from the sin. He, you would never find him uh, uh, bringing up your old past sins. He'll, he'll only bring up your current sin you didn't confess. <laughs> And let it prick your heart. Amen? Uh, but he ain't going to bring up the past. Uh, if, if your past is coming up on you, that's the enemy. Amen. That's the devil trying to bring you into condemnation. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. Uh, and we got to understand these things. And then the other is, is that uh, uh, he wants you to uh, understand, have wisdom and knowledge of him. Amen? Uh, that's... God's just giving you access to that. He wants you to have that wisdom and knowledge of him. And through that, he wants you to digest it. Digest the wisdom. Digest the knowledge so that you can reap the benefits from it. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What was the other? Uh, uh, that, that he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Amen? For us to dwell in. Hope that was fine. Amen? If one doesn't confess, then there's no hope. Huh? If, if you don't confess your sin, then you're out. But yet they still feel like they're in his will. They're deceived. The enemy has deceived and blinded their eyes. Uh, at least the glorious light of the gospel shall, uh, shall be revealed. Amen. And, and, and the reason, see now this is good. This is why uh, we, should, we should focus on what God's purpose is for us in his plan. Because in his plan, he wants us to have wisdom and, and, and understanding. So if you focus on God and get an understanding of God, then you know that unconfessed sin is wrong. And you won't be under that condemnation. Amen. Y'all with me? That's why it's important to know. My brother. No, I just asked what that fifth one was. Oh, that fifth one was that we should live in heaven and earth with peace with Christ for throughout eternity. <laughs> Amen. And God has made these things possible. Amen. Let's go over to hold that we yet go over to Romans chapter uh, eight. Yeah, there you go. In verse what twenty nine. Yes. Yeah, we can go there too. Let's go there too. Let's do 28, 28, and read all the way to the third. And we know that all things work together for good mm -hmm. to them that love God. Yes. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Now you, you're the call. Amen. According to God's purpose, his plan. Amen. Read. He chose you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me say this. Because people get that get that scripture wrong when they say, "Well, God chose me," you know. Uh, uh, God chooses all those that choose Christ. Mm. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. And all those who choose Christ enter into God's plan. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Say that again, sir. God chooses those who choose Christ. Because his choice, this plan that God has made, he put it all in Christ. Right. And then when a person chooses Christ, he lines up with the plan of God. Yes. Right. 
controls everyone as long as you line up with Christ. That's it. That's it. God so loved the world that he gave. I would say he called everyone. He didn't, he didn't. Well, there's a scripture that says God chose us when we choose him. Right. But, but there's also a scripture that says many are called. Right. Now, the calling, the calling is when you hear the gospel. Right. That's him calling you. Yes. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, yes. that's him calling you. And many are called. Many hear the gospel. Right. Uh, but a few are chosen. Ooh, I'm getting a revelation. Right. Uh, but that few is going to be like, it could be 20 people in the room hearing the gospel, but only five or six of them going to hear it and respond. Yeah. A few. <laughs> chosen. And the reason why they're chosen is because they chose Christ. They, they set their affection on Jesus. They accepted him as Lord and Savior. Y'all with me? They believe the report. Who shall believe the report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Amen. Thank you. you. You've been chosen because you, you chose to follow him. Amen. So now, then, everything that God has set in the motion belongs to you. His whole plan belongs to you. Y'all with me? It's like when I said about that insurance policy. State Farm has sell everybody an insurance policy. Or anybody. Uh, but but it only belongs to you if you purchase it. Yes, sir. And the benefits of it belongs to you. It's purchased. Right. Amen. Now, they 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 wrote that plan already before they came to you. God wrote his plan of salvation already before he presented it to you. Yes. Amen. But when you accepted Jesus, that unlocked the door. Then, then, then you became the chosen because he wrote the plan because he wanted people to receive Jesus. And those who choose the plan will receive him and his blessings. Y'all chew on that for a while. All right, where we at? All right, read it. For whom he did foreknow. For whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate. Uh, he predetermined. What should happen? Read it. To be conformed to the image of his son. Now that it is. He, now remember I said when he made you an adopted child? That, that adoption was so that you can be conformed to the image of Jesus. Uh, so that when he looks at you, in your broken state, he doesn't see you, he sees Jesus. Amen. Read. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. All right, what verse is that? 29. All right, read. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, uh -huh. them he also called. Now, now, he called. Now, remember, the calling is through the gospel. That's what he uses to call us. Read. And who be called, then be also justified. Those who receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, he justifies them. He cleanses them just as though they have not sinned. Read. And who be justified, them also he also glorifies. That's his outcome. That's the end point what God has for all of us that receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's what all of this is all about. He wants to glorify you. Amen? So that you can have all the benefits that he has ordained for you before the foundation of the world. Thank you. So all this is all this is predestined, Bishop. Right. We don't receive it. We don't, we don't receive the justification of the world. We don't receive that in 
Right? That's true. 100%. Okay. Because that's where you put all that blessing in. Right. Right. 100%. So, vice versa. If I receive Christ, then I've received all of that. Amen? And, and, and if I keep on living, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be glorified. If I, well, when I say keep on living, keep staying with Christ. <laughs> That's almost like it, it's kind of a revelation mm -hmm. that the chart that Bishop Ratcliffe used to have of the old man, mm -hmm. the new man, yes. the perfect man, yes. and now you're bringing out the glorified man. Yes. So yes. there could be another man added onto that man. Yeah. Glorified. Glorified man. Yeah. And that's that's the eternal. <laughs> We don't have the full revelation of that yet. That's eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The key with God is, once you accept Christ, you have access to all that now. You're just waiting for the manifestation of it. It all belongs to you. That's his plan. That's his will. That's his Amen? Oh, and then go over here to Philippians 3, 20 and 21. See, this is doctrine. That's why it's not all that exciting. Mm. <laughs> for, our, for our conversation yes. is in heaven. Our, our, our conversation, meaning our, our lifestyle, is in heaven. Our habitation is in heaven. Amen? When you in Christ, everything, uh, uh, you exist and abide with Christ, and Christ is in heaven. Am I right? Any in heaven. He's, where is he seated? On the right hand of God. Position of power and authority. What is he doing? Amen. 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 Help you. Amen. All right, read. Uh -huh. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that, I know, that tells you he's in heaven. Because I'm looking for him. From heaven. In Acts, chapter number 2, or 1, 1 or 2, it said, Ye men of Israel, of Galilee, why stand ye here looking into the heavens? Uh, Acts 1. Yeah. For this same Jesus uh, that, that went up to heaven, he coming back. Amen. Huh? Who else saw him in heaven? By the name of Stephen. Didn't he see it? Huh? <laughs> well, that, that, and you know, when I, when I, when I reread that and I saw that, it hit me, it hit me differently. I said, oh, he's, he's revealing uh, to us that he's in heaven. It's a revelation. Huh? That, when, that whole incident with Stephen, and they stoned him, and Stephen had the vision or the revelation uh, that heaven opened and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand. That's a revelation to us. Yeah. Uh, that, that we know where he is. Yeah. Uh, it was revealed where he is. Yeah. In heaven. Yeah. Uh, so, so now the devil can't tell you, oh, he's still under the rock. Uh, he's still here in the cave. No, nah, devil, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. He in heaven. Yeah. Huh? He in heaven. Huh? Yeah. He showed himself to Stephen in heaven because Stephen said the same thing he said when he was on the cross. Same thing. He said, he didn't curse out or anything. He said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Because they know not what they do. Yeah. And Jesus was, I guess he got Ooh. so excited because somebody <laughs> down there is still talking like him. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Move. Yeah. Amen. But he in heaven. Yeah. Amen. 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 Read. Who shall change our vile body? Now note. See, this is all God's plan. He wants to change you. Amen. You're not going to look like you look now when you get to heaven. You're going to get a new body. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Corruptible. 
can inherit incorruptible. Mortal can inherit immortality. Notice that word, immortality. What does that mean? Live forever. Amen. Eternal. Amen. That's what God's plan is for you. Since you are in Christ, God's plan for you is to be eternal. I was talking to the insurance guy about a death policy today, and he mentioned, he said, yeah, when you die, uh, you know, this would be available. And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to talk about the money. I was talking about when I die. Uh, uh, not that I'm morbid, but, 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 but I see the benefit yeah. of being with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and, and part of being in Christ, he takes the fear out of death. Yeah. Amen? Scripture said that in the book of Hebrews. Yeah. Uh, he, he delivered those that uh, had the condemnation of fear over their life. Amen. Uh, but that can only be erased by knowing where you're going. Uh, believing in what he said. Amen. The enemy wants to keep us in fear. But he said, God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. fear. But love, power, and what? Sound mind. That's what the scriptures and studying about God gives you. A sound mind. Stops you from being wishy-washy. Topsy-turvy. Uh, double mind. To and fro. <laughs> it's yeah. good makes you a well Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's Very good. Cool. You, you know how to balance out everything. Yep. And that's the spirit. Temperance. Amen. The fruit of the spirit. Temperance. Amen. You don't go over the top. Amen. Um, all right, read it. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. So, so then this, this, I have one more. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. The reason why we go over the scriptures like this, I'm trying to put into you that, that what we're saying is true. So you know it's written. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, now when, when, when did I become, when am I the son of God? Now. Right now. Amen. And, and, and you have God's DNA in you. Amen. Through the Holy Ghost. Right? You have God's nature in you. Why is that important? Why, why is it important for you to have the nature of God? True. But there's one other thing I'm looking for. So you be holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm talking about. And but all y'all said is true. Huh? But 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 you but you but you act like him. If you have his nature in you. You'll act like him. You'll talk like him. Amen? What, what did Jesus say when Thomas uh, said, well, show us the Father. You see, you see me? You see the Father? Now, God wants us to have that same testimony. Everybody, see, can I tell you something here? Everything that Jesus experienced he, God wants us to experience it. Yeah. Jesus was our example. Yeah. Amen? So that, so that, so that what, whatever Jesus did, God wants us to do. Whatever Jesus experienced, God wants us to experience it and, and have the power and authority as Jesus. Yeah. That's you.
strange for us to be here. Right? You don't suffer with him, you won't reign. Amen. Amen? They're going to hate you. Same experience. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. God wants us to be resurrected from the dead. <laughs> Come on here. Jesus received the Spirit. God wants us to receive the Spirit. Amen. Uh, everything. Except die on the cross. <laughs> we got to do that. He did that. He alone knows that. Amen. Amen. That's deep. There you go. So, so when that God wants us to have his nature, so like as Jesus answered Thomas, as you see the Father, as you see me, you see the Father. Right? People should see Jesus through us. Even though I haven't seen Jesus with my own eyes. Huh? I, 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 through the word and through the through the scriptures and through the spirit, through what the fruit produces, I should be just like him. My sister? Jesus became the word. Yes. And became like the word. Yes. So God wants us to become the word. Jesus said without his father, he is nothing. Nothing. God wants us to be that same way. Acknowledge him in everything and all things. Amen. Amen. That's the process. Amen. That's, that's, that's his plan. Yep. That's his plan. Everything that happens to you that God allows is designed to bring you to that plan. Come on. 
Come on. He's going to appear. And we're going to see him. And we're going to be like him. That's God's plan. Amen. That's, 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 that's good to know. Huh? Because I, it's not my job to be like Sebastian. I got to be like Jesus. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, you got to be like Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. You got to be like Jesus. We should all be like Jesus. <laughs> huh? Huh? Yes, small G. Small G. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you like Jesus? <laughs> mm. I like that. Strive and wait. I ain't got it all. I ain't got it yet. Uh, uh, what Paul said, uh, I have not attained, uh, but I'm reaching. I'm reaching. <laughs> yes. I'm reaching. I'm reaching. Yes. Amen. We got to be reaching and notice. He's reaching for what? The high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What we're talking about tonight is a high calling. Amen? Yep, it's in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, when you know these things, it should help you to keep your peace. Huh? Let God fight your battle. Amen? Yes, Not be unseemly. Act a fool. Yes, Amen? Why? Right. Because you got a lot of riding on this. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. WWJD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. What would he do? Amen? Hallelujah. He left us an example. And the more I know about him, the more I can be like him. <laughs> he rebounded out of when he suffered, he didn't threaten. Amen? So I, I do myself a disservice. You do yourself a disservice uh, when you don't study the scriptures. Amen? Amen? Let's look at that. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 15. This is going to, have to be a part two Bible study. Yes. Read, read 14. Let's see what it says. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give you a list of scriptures beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, read. But if I tarry long, Thou, that thou oughtest, mayest, that thou mayest know. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say first Timothy? First Timothy. Second Timothy. Delivered from something, 
I have to be caught up in it. Right? I gotta have some problems, I gotta have some issues. Right? I gotta have some sin, something, something. I gotta be delivered from. Amen. So, so don't think it's strange uh, that, 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 that you may get caught up or, 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 or find some issue in you. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes we, we, we put it so far on the pedestal, oh, I'm no good because I got this habit. I got this issue. Uh, God knew you had the habit and the issue before he gave you the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he wants to deliver you from it. Uh, he wants to deliver you out of it. Amen. And then once he delivers you out of it, he wants you to tell everybody. Uh, so you can testify of his greatness. Of his power. Amen. So don't let the enemy get you tripped up. My brother. Absolutely. We're going to make mistakes. Absolutely. Why? Right. Because we're not perfecting the way he wants us to be perfected. That's right. Yep. That's right. We're going to make some bad choices. Yes. But through all of that, yes. he's still great enough. Great enough. To deliver us from that. From that. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Mm. Huh? There's no temptation that has taken you. But such is common to man. But your God is able not to deliver you. As long as we don't blaspheme. Amen. Against the Holy Ghost. Ain't that something? Thank you, Lord. So, so, uh, uh, can I say this? And, and I'm not preaching a weak gospel when I say this. I'm just trying to help us. Amen. Because the enemy will beat us down. Amen. That, 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 uh, God in his great and wonderful power, he could deliver us from everything in one moment. <laughs> huh? He can do that. Yeah. Huh? But he chooses not to do that. Yeah. Amen? Because he wants us to work out something. Yeah. Right. He wants us to experience his power. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He wants us to experience the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because we are co-laborers with him. Is he pleased by it? 
No. Now, please buy it. Amen. Uh, are you going to get yours? Yes, you're going to get yours. Uh, but, but he wants you to turn to him. Uh, so you can be delivered. Amen. Amen. Notice with Peter. Didn't Jesus tell Peter that you're going to deny me? Huh? He told him that. Huh? And, uh, yeah. And then, what did he do? He went to Peter. Reconcile. Amen. That's what he'll do for us. He gave him the keys. Give him the keys. Put him back on the pedestal. Peter used the keys to open the door of the church. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. After he forgave him. And you won't see it in the scripture where uh, Peter brings it back up or Jesus brings it back up. Now, I was listening to a brother's testimony. Uh, uh, was it Friday? And uh, the brother was testifying how the Lord was delivering him to bring him into salvation. First he took away the reefer taste, then he took away the, the alcohol, and then he told his girlfriend at the time, we're not going to be nice. That's right. <laughs> I said, go ahead, brother. <laughs> but all, all the time, he was coming to church. And one of those times, he was there the first time, he said he felt like he received the Holy Ghost. Uh, but he didn't fully know it, but he felt like it. Uh, but my point in telling all that is, see the process which God took him through, uh, one, one at a time, delivering him from, from all of those things. Uh, thank you, Lord. And God had a reason for that, to show forth his power. Amen? Uh, now, God doesn't do everybody like that. He didn't do me like that. He took God out of the way for me and was over. Huh? And, 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 uh, but that doesn't uh, make me greater. That means that God was, was trying to reveal something to him. As God was revealed something to me. And we still in the same house. <laughs> we find that God does things differently. Absolutely. Hallelujah. And he deals with us according. Amen. What got me about that testimony was when you draw nigh unto God, yes. he'll draw nigh to you. Yes. That brother started paying tithes. Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's important. It's important. Huh? And yes. that, that he revered God that much. That's right. That he would pay tithes even though he wasn't in the church. Right. God was dealing with him. God was dealing with him. Right. Delivery. Some people been in the church 20 years, still ain't paid time. You know, they still got to be delivered. This is good. This is good Bible study. It helps you. Amen. Thank you. All right, finish reading that. Oh, that's uh. Did you, done, you finish reading that scripture? Yes, All right, let's go back over to it. Let's go back over to it. Ephesians, yep. Let's read that verse uh, uh, 15 again. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Now notice, what made, what made them eligible to go to the next level? Uh, they, he said, wherefore I heard of your faith uh, in the Lord Jesus. When, when, when people can see your faith and hear about your faith and your love toward the saints, you're about to be elevated. Amen? You're about to be elevated in him. Amen? All right, read. Cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Now Paul then sees the potential in the saints at Ephesus and he keeps them in prayer and he prays this continually. We need to pray this continually. What we're about to read. Alright, read. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, we need that. Amen? And notice, it's a spirit. Amen? The spirit of, of, of wisdom. Amen? And that uh, equates to the, uh, the sense of not just knowing, but, but doing what's right. Amen? Jesus said, I'll show you who a wise man is. He that heareth these sayings of mine, and what? Doeth them. Not just a hearer, but a what? A doer shall be blessed. Amen? So, 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 notice, like, the spirit of wisdom and what? Wisdom and revelation. Revelation. Uh, to reveal. Reveal. Amen? To, to unlock the secrets. Amen? There's some mysteries. There's some secrets uh, that God doesn't let everybody in on. Amen? And there's some secrets that he doesn't let all the saints in on. Amen? Unless you, unless you dedicate it. Huh? Y'all with me? That'd be dedicated. And I'm going to say this, and I, and I hope y'all can receive me with all acceptation. It, it, it really, the, the revelation that God gives, it doesn't, doesn't depend on your position. Amen. It's because I'm a, a bishop, got the title, that don't mean I know more than you. Uh, because you're a deacon or an elder, that don't mean you know more than the lay member or the usher. Amen. Uh, what determines that? What determines that knowledge? The relationship, the anointing, but there's a, there's one key thing I'm looking for. Humility, servitude. Yeah, but you can be humble and serve, but still not know nothing. The wisdom that God gives that's connected. Where do you get that from? Well, God. Holy Spirit. Yeah, the scriptures. Dedicating and studying the scriptures. That's what puts you above. That's what gives you the humility. That's what gives you the anointing. Amen? The power. The victory. That's what sets you above. Not your title. Huh? Yeah. Now you can read any other kind of book. And yeah. You can read right through it. Yeah. But when you read yeah. the word of God, the enemy blows on you. Right. He wants you to lose because he don't want you to know this. Nope. This is what we fight him with. That's it. The word of God. It's a battle. Mm -hmm. People read your phone. Stuff happens <laughs> when you try to stop mm -hmm. Amen. So you got to press your way through it. So you take that nap, wake back up, and go back in the scriptures. Huh? But when you read it, Bishop, when, once you start getting little nuggets from God, mm. tidbits, yeah. so the more you do that, the more you read, and the more God gives you those little tidbits and nuggets, you, you want to read more because you want to know more. Yep, yep. Now, now, you hit on what the purpose of the Spirit is. It gives you the hunger. And the thirst. Amen. And the drive. If, if you don't have a hunger or a thirst or a drive to read the word, you need to go on your knees and pray. Seek God. And then, and then make a conscious effort. Amen. To go into the word. Even though you don't feel like it. Or even though you don't have a desire to. Just do it because you know you should do it. And then when you do it that way by faith. God will give you the desire. Let's pray before you even start reading the word. Yep. Yep. I thought you were going to say when you were studying the word, and I wish I would have done this. When you talk about the nuggets, I wish I would have wrote down every nugget God gave. Yep. To restudy, relook at. Maybe we can start that today. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you, you, you have some things. 
Yes. Stuff that you've heard through preaching and teaching that was wow. Uh, and, and studying the word. And you 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 meditate on those things. Power. Notice what he said, then we've done it. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead. Because you know it's doctrine. Yes, sir. It's the truth. You should know the truth, and the truth shall what? 